You can listen to the Backward Compatible Podcast anytime, anywhere, in any way you like. Subscribe and listen to us on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, or YouTube. Then, join the discussion. Um, incidentally, I am the one white guy at the table today, so <laughs> it's uh, interesting. Don't uh, make this, weird. <laughs> <laughs> this week on Backward Compatible, Garston Davis and Derek Mans join us to discuss the topic of diversity and gaming and in the game development industry. Plus, Derek shares his list of the best and worst black characters in video games. The Backward Compatible.com podcast starts right now. <laughs> Backward Compatible. Hello, Backward Compatible listeners, and welcome to podcast number 22. As always, I am Chris, and I'm joined by a very familiar voice on the show today, Karsten Davis. How you doing, Chris? How's it going? And we've got a new guest with us today, Derek Mann. Uh, so, Derek, how about you introduce yourself? Hi, uh, Derek Mann. Uh, I am an A-Tech PhD student. Uh, I am a professor, associate professor over at DeVry University in Irving. Uh, come from a uh, developer's background uh, as a level designer, um, working on uh, many, you know, different titles from different platforms, from Nintendo DS to uh, PC, PS3, Xbox 360, and now doing some mobile stuff. Um, some notable titles, um, Hour of Victory, uh, Vegas Casino on the uh, Nintendo DS, Brothers in Arms, Hell's Highway, Aliens, Colonial Marines, um, and some of the mobile stuff, uh, Zamboni Challenge on the Android Windows, uh, and Knock 'em Off on uh, Android and iOS and Blackberry, believe it or not. <laughs> Very nice. It's good old Zamboni Challenge. <laughs> Indeed. I have a... I did some uh, marketing for the same people that put out that game. So we yes, at, at Magnin and Magnin Associates, uh, my uh, my mentor and uh, former professor. He was a professor over at the Guild Hall, and then uh, a professor over at DeVry, where he brought me in, and uh, you know the rest is history. Very nice. Um, so that's a pretty sizable resume. Probably not hard to get a job in the industry. So what are you uh, doing your PhD in? Uh, arts and technology. I'm, I'm, uh, I have not nailed down my research question yet, mm-hmm. um, but I definitely uh, want to um, include game development in that cycle. So, or in that question, uh, just trying to get something. Of course, that would be uh, very significant, and hopefully, something that'll open some eyes to, to some people in the industry. Cool. Awesome. What uh, games have you guys been playing recently? Is there anything that stands out? Anything you've been reading, watching? Uh, well, I've got this injured thumb from pressing on the controller playing Dying Light. Mm. <laughs> so all that parkouring, uh, parkouring or all over the city has uh, has my thumb injured. So <laughs> I literally had to put the controller down and start using a, a mouse and keyboard <laughs> <laughs> just to give my thumb a rest. So uh, that's what I've been playing. Cool, cool. How about you, Carson? I'm in the the everlasting hole that is Destiny. It's the game where we're all trying to learn how to quit to play, quit playing it, mm-hmm. yet we can't. Uh, <laughs> it, it's got that Diablo sense. It's, mm-hmm. it's Diablo with guns. It's you're, you're playing for your next loot drop. You're playing for your next uh, raid. Mm-hmm. It's a lot of fun. That and uh, Rogue Legacy, which came out last year. It's infinitely frustrating as a game, but mm-hmm. it's so much fun. So it seems like your uh, your shtick lately then is uh, games that are um, kind of endless in a sense. Games that um, basically just keep going. A lot of it is that, and it's a lot of uh, it's games I can pick up for forty minutes to put down. Mm. I don't have to sink you know two or three hours into it trying to advance in the story. It's something I just say, hey, I've got thirty five minutes in between classes and between uh, game work. Cool, mm-hmm. knock out a little bit, run a strike, you know, play a couple characters in Rogue Legacy. Cool, I'm done. Get back to work. Very nice. And uh, yeah, I guess what I've been looking at recently. Um, I'm actually trying to remember because it's. My like this past couple of weeks has just been crazy with lots of design work. What have I been playing? Game of Thrones, 
uh, the new Telltale oh, that nice. uh, episode two came out recently, so that was pretty cool. Um, felt a little bit transitionary to me, um, but in kind of a good way. Um, it was really meant to be kind of like character building and um, I think a segue between the events of the first one and whatever's happening in three. Um, and what's interesting is actually that it's a six episode season, whereas most of them are five for Telltale. Oh, right. right. Um, so it could be that they're kind of just like taking this as an excuse, like, hey, we've got one extra episode, sort of use this more as a setup, introduce more people, and then kind of let things go nuts in episode three. So that'll probably be pretty cool. Um, what else have I been playing? Oh, oh yeah. So kind of the main like little time thing, kind of like along the lines of yours, Karsten, with me um, you know, like sit down for thirty minutes, forty minutes, and play it. Um, the thing I'll sort of do when I have stuff stuff just running in the background, I want to just veg. Um, Tamodachi Life on the 3DS. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. Yes. Um, it's just stupid, fun little game. Um, it's just something that you can not pay attention to while you're doing it, and just sort of pop it in for five minutes or do whatever. So it's a pretty cool. Indeed. I, I, I was uh, playing a lot of Call of Duty Ghost, and then I transitioned over to uh, Advanced Warfare, but um, the the learning curve on, on the, the new technology, I'm speaking to it as if it's, like, real. <laughs> new technology. Uh, yeah. <laughs> as a soldier, I'm unable to yeah. Yeah, I, navigate through the game mm-hmm. uh, like I want to mm-hmm. um, comfortably because I was playing Ghost so much. So I had to put that down. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I wish I had more time. I'm reading a lot of books uh, assigned to me by uh, Dr. Monica Evans. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> so not as many games as I'd like to play. Yeah, I can understand <laughs> that for yeah. sure. Yeah, the old, old issue. Too many games, not enough time. Yeah, indeed. It's, it's the like uh, it's it's kind of a joke among game de- the game developers, and people always uh, probably don't quite get it, or they do, or whatever. But uh, you know, people assume that in game design, all we do is play games all day. Basically, it's like no, we're too busy making games to play them. <laughs> yeah. Indeed, uh, that is and, true. And Very you know, the the development itself usually isn't necessarily fun per se. It's like we enjoy it because it's the sort of stuff that we enjoy putting our effort into, our creative juices. But um, a lot of it is you know drudge work. So I'm just figuring things out. Indeed, indeed. Lots of numbers. Mm. Lots and lots of numbers. You know, the Steam sale from over Christmas, I'm looking at my long list, and I'm like, (laughs) out of all that stuff I purchased, I get Dying Light and start playing that, Mm -hmm. even though I knew there was like 100 other games before that that I wanted to play and uh, didn't get around to playing. But Mm. And now there's other developer friends of mine who are re-releasing stuff and... Um, uh, like uh, one of my one of my friends, uh, he just they just released uh, what was it? Um, and I almost said uh, what was it? Uh, I think in Homeworld. Homeworld, yeah, yeah. Just, just came released, out uh, yeah, yesterday. Exactly, Homeworld. And I was like, come on, man! I <laughs> I'm going to purchase it because I know you, <laughs> right? and 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 it's an awesome game anyway. But yeah. to do a, have a have an HD version of that mm. is awesome. Mm. Um, but I was just like, oh, I can't, I can't. Mm-hmm. Let me, let me, you know, you know, stand back. I'll mm-hmm. grab it another time, and mm-hmm. you know, and uh, start playing it. But uh, yeah, this is the time thing, man. This mm-hmm. is uh, it's limited. Yeah, we, we've talked on the podcast before about um, what happens when Humble Bundle comes around. Oh, and indeed. You buy like all the Humble Bundle games, and your library is just like I think I've got like I don't know, but at least five hundred games in my library, and like. 90% of them I haven't even touched, you know? Oh, indeed. And, and part of it is just because, like, you pay two bucks and you get 20 games, <laughs> you know, but... And I'm really... I really will say that I've probably purchased probably about 30% of those games I have on disc mm. uh, CD-ROM, uh-huh. uh, not even DVD, right? Mm. Um, <laughs> that, uh, you know, you definitely needed to get through Steam because, mm. you, know, you, you know, you'd have to, you know, boot up a... A, 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 you know, an '86 machine to yeah. uh, you know to play, so mm-hmm. kind of uh, made to work on modern computers again when it gets up on Steam. Exactly. exactly. Um, I think sometimes too, you can actually use your um, like the CD product activation code, like they used to make you put in when you installed. I think you can put that into Steam sometimes, and you can redeem it that way. Yeah, and I have actually, so that's a good thing. Cool. cool. Thank you, Steam. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Val. Good guy, Steam. Yeah. Good guy, Steam. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. So, I think our main topic of discussion today is going to be uh, diversity in gaming. Um, incidentally, I am the one white guy at the table today. So, it's uh, interesting. <laughs> Don't uh, make this weird. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> but no, we're going to keep this light. We're going to keep this fun. Um, just sort of talk about things in a very real way. Just try to kind of break this down. So um, I recall, Derek, one time when uh, you were in a class that I was TAing. Um, I think you're – was that your first semester at UTD or was your second? I think it was my first. Your first? Actually, yeah. Um, you had a uh, paper that we, everyone in the class was supposed to write this research paper. And yours um, was on the topic of blacks in gaming and in the industry as well. It was both? Right. So it was sort of a – you know, it was just a, a combination to say blacks in gaming um, and, and relating the fact that, you know, um, uh, the stereotypes of characters in games mm-hmm. uh, can be – I feel like can be directly um, – uh, related to the lack of black developers mm-hmm. in in the industry, uh, so I wrote a paper and I, th- I thought it was necessary to to um, to point out mm-hmm. some of the statistics based on um, you know uh, that representation in the industry and quite frankly some uh, some very offensive mm-hmm. characters mm-hmm. and things in some games and um, and uh, that that same paper got me accepted. For an advocacy talk at uh, GDC 2015. Oh so, wow, that's awesome! Uh, so you guys, anyone who's going to be at GDC mm-hmm. uh, this year should come and uh, check out the talk. Awesome, um, and that's actually very pertinent given um, recent stuff that's been happening with uh, women in gaming. That whole topic, um, which we won't delve too much into right now, but I think um, uh, you know people who would argue that the portrayal of women in games or that you know the game culture might not be super friendly to women, I think, just comes from the fact that we don't have too many female developers. <laughs> Um, and it's kind of it sounds like what you basically have been pointing out with black developers as well. Oh, indeed, I agree. Um, uh, you know, um, I want to say uh, I forget the I think it was the, the last part of my uh, stint at the Guild Hall. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, Brenda Romero uh, came to talk about sex uh, and violence in games, mm-hmm. and I actually asked her why she didn't include race in it, and she says, "Oh, race." You would have to have one whole subject just on race, mm-hmm. so um, so I felt like, hey, that'd be great to to point that out, um, you know, as a professional mm-hmm. in the industry. So cool. Well, how about you break it down for us? Uh, sure. Uh, so I wrote the the, the paper and 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 uh, just I'll throw out a few numbers uh, based on uh, the last report I checked, which was a 2012 release uh, from uh, the IGDA. And uh, it just points out the demographic, which is um, 88%, 88.5% are male, uh, 11.5% are female. But then the the um, then further breaking that down, there are 83.3% uh, whites in the industry, uh, 2% black, 2.5% uh, Hispanic or Latino, uh, 7.5% uh, Asian. And then 4.7 percent other, um, and then they further break it down. Uh, 92 percent are heterosexual, uh, 2.7 percent are le- uh, lesbian or gay, and 2.7 percent are bisexual, with an average age of 31. So mm-hmm. uh, they go further on and uh, you know break down the, their average year, 4.5 years uh, in the industry. Um, the percentage of people in disabilities, 13 percent. Um, uh, and then, of course, more than 80% have a, a university-level education. Uh, more than 60% of studios claim that uh, obtaining diverse applicants is challenging. Mm. Uh, and that was, again, based on a Game Developers Demographic Report from uh, 2000, 2012, mm-hmm. uh, released by IGDA. Um, so just looking at that and then basing uh, the rest of my paper on what... Uh, you know what games are out there that are that are popular. Um, I point out things, uh, games like you know uh, Madden, uh, football, and the NBA 2K Live uh, games and such. And you know for those to be very top-selling, money-making games, um, there's always the question of you know how many uh, diverse groups are developing the games, mm-hmm. right? So. Mm-hmm. Uh, those are uh, a lot of the things I point out in my paper. Gotcha. <clears throat> and so, what do you think it is that we're so um, like white male dominant in this industry right now? That's a good question. And it might be a very complex question with no easy answer, but just kind of well, start hacking away at it. I can start with my experience at least because this isn't the first thing I've done. Um, Chris knows, and this is going to be the fun where I incriminate myself. <laughs> I used to work in democratic politics. Mm-hmm. Um, 
uh, since the time I was in about sixth grade, and I read an IGN article talking about go to college to make games. I wanted to make games, and you know, you go through, hey, I want to make games, I want to make games, and it's finally somebody being a black being a black male and having a lot of community influence. Somebody tells you that's a kid's that's a kid's you know pursuit. That's mm-hmm. not something adults do, and you kind of get pushed away from it because I know for me, after a while, people are like, well. Is that stable? And to this day, I fight my dad about it. He mm. doesn't think it's a, a stable sort of, you know, a viable way to make a living. So, you know, I ended up doing politics and doing law, which I enjoy. I wouldn't have chosen if I don't enjoy it. But, you know, your heart always finds a way back where it's supposed to be. Uh, so some of it, I have to say, can be community pressure. Mm. You know, Spike Lee has said for years, parents kill more dreams than anything. And that's that's tough. It's It's very tough. It's very hard to get past that, you know. The black community has always had that sense of community and family, and you always want to, you know, respect your elders and, and do, you know, your parents have your your, your best interests in mind. Mm. But at the same time, you need to branch out, and it gets tough. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, and and to add to that is um, the lack of um, uh, knowledge of uh, game development, mm. um, whether it's now more uh, popular to to gain that knowledge through education. Or by way of most people who started out in the industry and made it what it is today by uh, knowing math and programming and uh, uh, and having like-minded friends to create said games, right? Mm-hmm. So uh, those two things, uh, I believe, are what makes it harder to find talent. Now, the talent is there. Um, I'm an example. Um You know, I have plenty of friends who I know who, again, are very uh, great at art, great at design, great at programming. Um, But, you know, uh, it, it, you know, and then, of course, there's that whole thing of who you know as well. I Mm -hmm. mean, you know, uh, you can add that into the to the mix as well. So, excuse me, if I if I'm working at a company Mm -hmm. um, and I want to bring in someone, well, I know as an African-American, as a black man, that I don't know a ton of black men who are game developers, Mm -hmm. right? So, um, you know, I may know one or two, but, you know, the same would go for uh, my white brethren that would say, hey, well, I know 20 guys, you know? And so, you know, the numbers of just knowing and uh, someone who is trained or have that knowledge is where that balance goes. Right. We could also argue that there some people just don't want that in the fold, mm-hmm. possibly. So that's you know that is a, another, you know that is another big possibility that you know may not be, you know, admitted. But mm-hmm. you know, um, uh, but yeah, those are, those are things I feel like are definitely a, a factor. Mm-hmm. Um, so I also recall in your presentation, you mentioned this briefly, also um, sort of like the stereotypes we see and characters in games. Um, do you want to sort of go through a few of those examples and that sort of thing? Oh, indeed. Um, so, you know, again, uh, the, the, the purpose of uh, making the point about the lack of uh, black developers, also uh, the caveat of, you know, you know <laughs> what characters are being created and how or what information is being used to create said character, even mm. if it's fictional character, you have mm. to get your information from somewhere. So, right. um, so I picked I picked a, a few negative negative characters that I found in some games. Um, and you know what? What I'll do first is I will mention some great positive characters first. Cool, sounds and good. And then I'll uh, mention a negative. So some of my favorite positive characters that I found in some games um, in Crackdown, the agency. Uh, great game, and I love the fact that you can create your own character in your mm-hmm. likeness. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, they pulled that off well, just like with uh, the guys at Bethesda mm-hmm. uh, with Fallout. Yeah, you know. Um, and I did mention that on the list, and my apologies, mm-hmm. it was not intention intentional. I just, you know. Um, you know, maybe because it was such a great game, and I just, <laughs> you know, didn't look at it either way. But yeah, so I compare those two. Uh, I'll use another old, old one uh, from PS2 days: uh, Blade, uh, Spawn. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, this one's with an asterisk, but uh, God of War, Kratos. Um, uh, I'll, I'll 
I will roll with that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I mean, we can go back. If we go historically, we could look at you know the Romans, mm-hmm. uh, Romans taking over a lot of northern Africa, and mm-hmm. then just uh, let's face it, the, his character is sort of a hybrid mm-hmm. or a mixture of cultures. So um, cool. But uh, leave from the Walking Dead. That's I oh like yeah, to, that was, I like that's to a good start one. That is here's what we need to mm-hmm. have. Our characters be like mm-hmm. indeed or um, even uh clementine if you want to extend that a little bit oh indeed indeed and, and she's an interesting case because she's young and a girl um and so like and basically in every way possible when you're controlling her in the walking dead season two it's like the complete opposite of everything you've ever controlled as a you know player avatar oh agreed and it makes it really interesting indeed and i'll just quickly finish out the positive list mm-hmm. um uh so I use Torque from The Suffering, mm-hmm. uh, Shell from Portal, Portal and Portal 2, mm-hmm. um, The Chronicles of Riddick. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I could put another asterisk next to that. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of those. <laughs> uh, Left 4 Dead and Left 4 Dead 2, Lewis and Coach and Rochelle. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Great. Um, Valve, you know, I, you, Valve will never let you down when it comes to a diverse character set. Uh, Borderlands with Roland. Uh, Who they shot? You know, I'm still mad about. Still mad he died the second one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because he was like he was the character that I played through Borderlands one, and then it's like no, <laughs> I killed my guy. <laughs> so you try, you know. Yeah, yeah. But hey, you know, hey, you made the positive list, and mm-hmm. and hopefully, uh, hopefully, you guys will write someone else back in. <laughs> uh, uh, Maybe Cyborg Roland. <laughs> 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 right, right. Um, he doesn't have a heart anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and so finishing it out, mm-hmm. um, uh, I, another asterisk: uh, Emilio Burick, Burick from Wheel Man. <laughs> 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 and uh, of course, to finish out that positive uh, list, I mean, it, it can go on, but mm-hmm. this is my last: is uh, Emmett Graves from Starhawk. Okay. Yeah. So um, so those are greats. I mean, I had some honorable mentions: Alex Vance. <laughs> Because these are givens, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, um, Shiva uh, Alamar from Resident Evil Five, and of course Sergeant Major Avery Junior Johnson from <laughs> from Halo. So oh, right, I mean, yeah, the, yeah. but those are those are givens to me. You know, yeah. those are things I shouldn't have to mention, right? Mm-hmm. But then our negatives. Now our negatives, you know, oh, yeah, God, this is gonna hurt. Yeah, this, <laughs> the, the, this, these are the negatives, and these are the things that I, I you know, I, I have to say that when I saw these characters, either hearing them or seeing them, I just I, there's no need to candy coat it. I felt offended. Mm. So first on the list, uh, Sam B from Dead Island. Mm. Uh, while we could probably pull some rapper out of some you know mm. uh, category and say, boom, there he is. Um, I just felt like it was his whole bio was just so <laughs> so on the extreme of mm. of stereotype, you know. Oh, I'm a rapper, and you know, crackhead mother, and mm. this and that. It was just like, really? Mm. They just went really extreme with this yeah. guy's and, background. And to kind of play devil's advocate there for a second, like you know, that's a character too that like you know, it's over the top, but it's still kind of believable in a sense because you could probably pull some out of your life who would do that. Um, but at the same time, I think the fact that we have so few <laughs> black characters in general that if this is like the one that like some some people are only going to see this one, why has it got to be that one? Right? It, yeah, indeed, and that's and, mm-hmm. and that and I agree with you. Yes. You know, um, the the character, the bio, sure, uh, mm-hmm. you know, is, is is something that you could pull from real life for mm-hmm. sure. We, yeah, you know, uh, fat comes from, uh, you know, fiction is, you know, pulls things from fact, right? So, mm-hmm. um, in any event, um, so that one, and, and, and quite honestly, all the bios there were mm-hmm. pretty stereotypical. It was like, uh, they, were, they were pretty pretty crazy, mm-hmm. but the Sam B stuck out of my mind. Gotcha, um, gotcha. A Final Fantasy VII. Oh, good lord! <laughs> Barrett Wallace. Uh-huh. Uh huh. The only reason why I mentioned Barrett Wallace is the stereotype uh, that I feel like was very harsh on him was because of his afro and the fact that they took a bird mm-hmm. and put him in the afro. I, that was very offensive. Are you thinking of thirteen? <laughs> Am I thinking of thirteen? You're probably thinking of thirteen. I think I may have just used the, the wrong so, Final so Fantasy So Final Fantasy number. Seven was the guy with the uh, the gun arm. Oh no! Yes, I apologize. Okay. Um, it, no, he's in here. Mm. We'll, Final, we'll no. come back to thirteen. Size, yes, we'll come back. to 13. <laughs> yes. Barrett Wallace was again 
fit this stereotype. Mm. You know, a black guy has to be this big black dude, mm. you know, overwhelming. The big buff guy. Yes, yeah. the big buff guy. So I'm sorry, I'm just mixing up my versions. I apologize. Mm. Uh, yes, so that was sort of this thing where I was like, all right, you know, are, are, are all of the characters from Final Fantasy going to be like, wow, not, um, I guess, representative of the average mm. black man versus the extreme, like, you know. And, actually, and I don't want to pick too much on Japan necessarily, but you have to keep in mind that Final Fantasy is from Japanese developers, and they're very homogenous over there, so I figure that if they're putting someone in there, they want to kind of accentuate like all the things make them unique, quote-unquote, you know, um, for better or for worse, that, that's, and possibly for worse. That can be kind of slippery, though. Yeah. Yeah, it... it I'm not excusing it. I'm just saying yeah. that it could be a reason. You know? uh, uh, yeah, well, you know, when you come modern right now, now, when you come modern and now that, you know, uh, those companies have American, you know, and that's, uh, that's affiliates. Great point. Now it's just like, hey, yeah, yeah. there's no excuse now yeah. as opposed to 20 years ago, for example. Mm-hmm. Uh, so th- that's when I sort of say, all right, guys, you, you should know by now mm-hmm. your American mm-hmm. associates should be telling you no. Every one of your flagship games gets translated into English and sold in the U.S. Right. Often simultaneously with the Japanese release. I- indeed. So, indeed. Yeah. And that's the only reason why I mention it is because mm-hmm. of, hey, modern day people can let you know. Yeah. Um, uh, moving on down the list, Heavy Rain. Jackson, Mad Jack, Neville. Uh, so a lot of people didn't play the game, but again, mm-hmm. the visuals of the fact that... Um, you know, he was the only black person in the game, and of course, he had to be the criminal. So, uh, again, it's just another one of those things where it's it. it um, you know, you want some positiveness, and and right. so I mentioned that for that reason. Right, right. Um, uh, <laughs> well, uh, this one could I could put an asterisk on, but um, Metal, Gear, Metal Gear Solid Four: Guns of the Patriot, mm-hmm. Patriots, Drebin. Oh, uh, right, Drebin. Ninety three. Right, right. I. I I want to have a conversation about this one because I don't necessarily feel that he was a bad stereotype when taken in context of the game, and that's what's important about it. Because as as he goes with his very he's very flamboyant, very eccentric mm-hmm. for what he's supposed to be the representation of something outside of the Patriot system. He works. Is his skin color problematic? I can see where you're going with that. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. But even I'm just taking a look at the entire picture and how Kojima, for the most part, outside of some very interesting things throughout the series, especially if you go back and look at at 2 with what he did with Fortune as a character, has been very, very sort of progressive with how he writes his characters. I think Drebin was just a... He was more of a tool to tell a story that was poorly thought out mm. than it was an indictment on Kojima. Oh no, and I agree. That's why I said asterisk on that yeah, because exactly. it's it's kind of it could go either way, and right, it's, right. it's sort of like yeah, because I'm a huge fan of Metal Gear, you mm-hmm. know, and it's like hey, you know, um, you, you hate to be disappointed by something by something's a great right. game, right? So right, right. so asterisk on that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, now this one probably was it's I'm going to say beats out Sam B altogether um was patrolman number 1 out of still life and if anyone you can youtube it it is uh the the, the look is has nothing to do with his look mm. he's actually a police officer mm. but the way he spoke uh he shouldn't have even made the force the way they had him mm. speaking. Right, right. Uh, so that, I was really offended. And actually, I'm going to include that video uh, as a part of um, our, our survey at GDC. So mm. um, anyone gets a chance, you can YouTube um, Still Life, and uh, it'll be the first patrol, just patrolman number one. And mm. uh, just listening to him, you'll, you'll understand what I'm saying. Mm. Um now back to Final Fantasy Thirteen. There we are. Yes. So, now Final Fantasy, but Thirteen mm-hmm. size. Now yes, mm-hmm. I have my characters mixed up. I apologize. Mm-hmm. The Afro thing with the bird <laughs> that is very offensive. It's there's no doubt that they can give me any excuse. Any any anyone else could have had a bird in their hair. Mm-hmm. They decided to put a bird in this guy's hair, and that. Um, is directly in line with defensiveness uh, because of the texture of his hair. Mm. I just felt like, you know, someone said, hey, let's, you know, 
add this that, that, that random hair, bird. That, to that this hair is just baying out of her bird in it. Yeah. Yes, exactly. And, and the, the Afro thing. Mm-hmm. Look, we you know, yes, that the Afro thing is coming back around as a style, mm-hmm. but <laughs> Japanese developers always tend to make their characters like they are out of the seventies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so. I was about to say, like, s- and I wonder if that has something to do with, um, ag- again, like, you know, sort of sometimes stereotypes being based on the media you consume. If they're sort of, like, catching up on, like, you know, these like, sort of, like, classic 70s films with these characters they recognize and they figure, oh, let's make this character look like this, when, like, 70s films are not the best films for, like, political correctness Ex- by today's standards. Exactly. But then that brings me to the thing of, I know Japanese people love, for example, Will Smith mm. or, or uh, you know... Denzel Washington because right. I'm sure they've seen plenty of action flicks mm-hmm. with those guys just as an example sure and it's like hey man there's plenty of examples uh, to to use mm-hmm. and uh, even like I said even if he, look even if they gave him and kept him with an afro mm-hmm. the whole bird thing in his hair is mm-hmm. just yeah I, it's it and is. it's kind of sad too because the bird is actually an interesting plot device because it, it like ties into a story about like him looking for his son and that sort of stuff but and and yeah and I understood that and it was you know even and I mean again the the, the like they didn't make him look crazy they didn't give mm-hmm. him a crazy background mm-hmm. but it was just that one small thing <laughs> that you know your shoulder do anything else yeah yeah exactly <laughs> in your pocket exactly. you know? right <laughs> right hey even if it's hey some weird thing where he, you know got the bird like you said lived in his pocket mm-hmm. sure uh, I think I would have even been okay if he lived in his beard because mm-hmm. other people have had that whole yeah. joke of you have a woolly beard yeah, and yeah. you know things are living in it yeah, yeah things are living yeah, in it yeah. right but uh, yeah no so so interesting side point that I just thought of too um, Saz Garrett and um, the Black Power Ranger all wield guns like they're the only gun wielders in their respective thing. <laughs> no, Light, Lightning technically had a gun sword, but anyway. I was gonna say, I was gonna say black black Power Ranger. Everybody technically had a gun on the Power Rangers. A good point. Yeah. He, he just had the axe that was also a gun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, let's, but let's not even get into the Power Rangers and how the first season. I don't know who it's Simone thought it was a good idea to say, "Hey, okay, let's put the Native American dude in the red costume. Let's put the Asian girl in the yellow costume. Let's put the white girl in the pink, the that, in the blue, and the black guy in the black." That never occurred to me. <laughs> Like, when someone dropped it off, I was like, oh, yeah. oh man, now that I think about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the fact they brought Tommy back, the all American white guy, as the white. white Power Ranger. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. man. Yeah, but so. that, uh, that short film that came out recently was pretty sick. It was great. It was. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I, 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 and to you, some very uh, significant stars, and it was great, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so really I appreciate that. Value. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I appreciated that. Um, but sorry, I would not to distract too much. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> uh, uh, this, the, the list is only a few more. Um, mm-hmm. So I went back a little ways because uh, this one is on a few uh, of uh, people's lists uh, on the web, and uh, it's Mike Tyson's Punch Out. Mm-hmm. Okay, now this this is actually an interesting one to bring up because now I'm going to refer, refer to a, I don't know if you've ever seen Gaijin Gooba's actual stuff on YouTube with the game theorists. Yes. He did a breakdown of all the Punch Out characters and how if you actually look at what they do, they're more cultural representations of wherever they're from than they are stereotypes. Now, some of the naming is bad. Really, really bad. Mm. But as far as characters go, to actually have Piston Honda speaking correct Japanese is a nice touch. To have Bald Bull actually acting as somebody from the Turkish area would is a nice touch. Mm. Still, if, if the names weren't what they were, mm. they'd probably go a lot further than it having somebody named Vodka Drunkinski. Yeah, <laughs> it's just bad. Um, yeah, it was interesting too. The uh, the Wii reboot of Punch Out that came out, I think, in like 2011, 2012, something like that. Um, also had the same sort of like highly stereotyped characters, but they were making fun of pretty much every culture imaginable equally. So in a way, you kind of like can't get mad at them. No, indeed. And I think just because of the time that Mike Tyson's Mm -hmm. game was out, Mm -hmm. that that's where it was sort of a a questionable thing. Mm -hmm. Um, But agreed on that. If Mm -hmm. you're going to commit, (laughs) you commit to everything like a Grand Theft Auto. Mm -hmm. But but that's that's a deep storyline, and they're sort of trying to imitate. I I believe they're Mm -hmm. trying to imitate life um, 
almost as if you said, hey, if I was a criminal, this would be what I would do right. sort of thing versus mm-hmm. oh, we're just going to throw the stereotype out there because I'm sure that that's what people would, uh, one of the first things people would mention would be something like a Grand Theft Auto. Sure. And I, that's why I didn't even mention it in the list at all mm-hmm. because uh, because it's very theatrical mm-hmm. and very, I don't find that they, again, mm-hmm. they didn't focus on any particular person. Yeah. And gave some stereotype is again mm-hmm. they committed to everyone's mm-hmm. stereotypes yeah. and and um, and of course as always pulls it off well with yeah. their great backstories. Yeah. And GTA is just an interesting case in general because it's kind of it's often the poster child for like violence in video games and how it's a uh, you know video games are corrupting force in our culture and all this different stuff. It's like if you actually like see GTA for what it is, it's pure satire you know indeed and that's the entire game is just this satirical romp and you know it's it's gonna rub people the wrong way but you know that's what it is exactly so. exactly i'd say it's parody i won't take it as far satire actually did mm-hmm. paper parody satire yeah, yeah. my first uh, yeah, yeah. yeah those, those are two big different things that, that yeah that's true because that's satire true. has a point parody is more just making fun of it for comedic value i don't know what the point of gta is what's the message Oh, there is. Well, nah. <laughs> there is no. <laughs> the message is we're going to make a lot of money <laughs> yeah, that's the main one. based exactly. on these stereotypes. Yeah, you might be able to argue that like sometimes the main plots make some interesting points about right. society or whatever. But Indeed. Um, but that's another discussion for another time. So. <laughs> I, mean, I, think, I think four hit it on the head as a satire of the American dream because it mm. ends with either your cut. No oh, spoilers, mm. but come on, guys. It was many, many years ago. We're two years. Uh, I never did find out what the ending was. This is good. Yeah. <laughs> well, well you, you hunt down Dimitri and you eventually kill him, but mm. it comes at the cost of, well, you hunt down a Dimitri or another mob boss that you work for, mm-hmm. and it comes at the cost of either your girlfriend's life mm. or your cousin's life. Ah. So, in the end, yes, Nico gets what he wants. He gets the power, he gets money, he's you know one of these underground kingpins, but it's cost him everything to get there. Mm. That's satire. That is, if you want this so-called dream, mm. it will take from you much more than you earn. Right. With the Grand Theft Auto V, it's, hey, this is L.A., L.A.'s terrible. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is the message I can get behind. Yeah, indeed. indeed, indeed. And it's, and it, but it, it sort of lacks that sting, mm. you know, uh, it's funny you're talking about you know if you're gonna if you're gonna attack everybody attack everybody mm. South Park South Park there's nothing sacred they have attacked mm. everybody they will attack everybody but at the end of the day even though it's a lot of times on the nose with you know I learned something today mm. you're getting a message mm. it may not be something you agree with you may <laughs> not agree with Matt and Trey's politics or mm. their views on religion or whatever but at the end of the day they are trying to say something through their show sure indeed indeed. Uh, let's see. I'm going to finish out. Let's see. There's four left. Uh, so <laughs> I'm mentioning this game. Um, I'm not sure of the release or what have you, but Ethnic Cleansing. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Not ethnic. I'm thinking of another game. I'm sorry. Ethnic Cleansing is the one where we we know has uh, been, um, uh, you know, been developed and, you know, are play, is played by... Um, certain opinionated uh, group of people so Mm -hmm. self-explanatory i just put that out there and then um moving on a deus ex human revolution and the homeless black woman in this game again goes back to that patrolman number one situation where um the stereotype of homeless people being Mm -hmm. um illiterate and (laughs) and so to me you stretch too far to try to say oh well the person was homeless when really we know homeless people are probably some of the most intelligent people mm. right. in the world out there. They just happen to have mental, the mental thing is mm. where the homeless uh, problem uh, comes into play. So, again, um, that again has been mentioned on some top ten lists as well. Um, another old one, Animal Crossing, A Wild World, Mario to Black, uh, Sheet Racial Slur. So there was a, a you know, <laughs> someone put the racial slur in the game, but um, it didn't get, it, they, no one caught it. So yeah, of I never course, heard about it. Yeah, so. yeah, it's, yeah. Um, yeah, it was just one of those unfortunate things mm. that uh, apparently it was a joke and then it was never taken out. Mm. Um, I think that, that reminds me, actually, when I was in high school yearbook, there was a case, I forget where exactly, but... Um, 
I think is a joke. It kind of reminded me of this. That like they put just Black Girl as the name for someone in the yearbook, but forgot to take it out. And so it was like name, 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 Black Girl. It's like ooh, that's, yeah. You don't even joke like that because if it doesn't yeah. get taken out, then so it, that's, right. you're in that's massive even, trouble. That's even more problematic. That it's okay to put a joke like that in during development, mm. and that's allowed to fly. Like that is. That's much, much more problematic than necessarily it making the release. That's mm-hmm. that's okay. The, the internal country yeah. culture says that it's yeah. all right with it. Yeah, indeed. And then uh, and then to finish out, another old one uh, was actually a Tom Sawyer game, and uh, Slave Jim was really drawn. Ve- it was he was drawn very, very. It, it, was, I, it, was, it was horrible. Mm-hmm. Um, it was very. I don't know, Jim Crowish, if you will, in terms of uh, the time and mm-hmm. the, the the way he looks. It goes back to. Uh, to it, you know, far back as slavery in terms mm-hmm. of just his the way the character looked, like those old um, uh, caricatured sort of drawings that they used to have. Exactly, like and totally it, off. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah very, very uh, um, polarized. Mm-hmm. You know, if you will, in terms of the drawing. But um, mm-hmm. but anyway, uh, that is my top ten, and uh, or top. I guess it was top ten. I lost count. Because yeah. just talking about it, but those are—I mean, they're, 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 those are the ones I mentioned. There's, there's others. There are others, but those are the ones that I felt were uh, the ones that I disliked. So, you know, um, you know, and, and these are a mixture of, like you said, these are Japanese companies, these are Canadian companies, mm. these are Australian companies. Mm. Um, so, the, you know, unfortunately, uh, you know, you can't say. To someone who's from another country, hey, this is what the deal is, mm. without um, you know e- even there being a language barrier. But I believe with this day and time, if you're going to release something in America, mm. that you know they should consult someone sure. to, to 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 you know because yeah. a lot of these things are just very small mm. things in the game. It's not like they took a, a main character and said, hey, here's this right, this right. huge stereotype. Uh, they're they're throwing these little things in, and it. Um, and that's when you know you're like, hey, I bought this game, you know, um, I'm playing it. And now all of a sudden, halfway through it, holy smokes, I'm like highly offended. So yeah. that's yeah. Yeah. that's when it gets uh, uh, you know uh, negative for me. Mm-hmm. So so definitely more uh, a topic now that localization teams should be paying attention to, and you know, bring in someone ahead of you know, like because what what happens a lot of times is localization does happen concurrently sometimes, but after pretty much everything's been written. So, like, they send you the stuff over, and then they translate and, like, maybe update a few, like, inside references to make sure that makes sense to that culture. But probably also localization should be keeping an eye on, like, okay, let's not include things that are offensive in my country. That sort of thing, right? Indeed, because, uh, you know, a homeless woman speaking could have easily, you could have easily voiced over something different than, you know, that, you know. Um, and that's where, to me, yeah, sure, she's a black homeless woman, but... Mm-hmm. The, the the sound of it is where I became offended. It wasn't the fact that she was homeless. Mm. So those those are the s- smaller things that people would realize, like oh, you know, um, you know. So yeah. Well, I think it's actually an interesting conversation. You know, we brought up. Uh, you mentioned the joke in the book. We mentioned the um, joke in the game. Is that prevalent? Prevalent in studio culture? Is that something you've seen before? For them to have jokes of that sort in a game during early builds or. I don't know if you can speak to it, but or if you can speak to it, you know, via contractual and stuff. But is that something you've seen before? Or is that just something that kind of caught you full time off guard? Uh, no, I've never, I've never seen it in any of the studios I've worked in, or or with any of the people I've worked with. Um, can I say other things in these studios may have been questionable? Eh, but I mean, again, the studios I worked for, no one has ever done anything that I've seriously looked at and said, "Man, that was pretty offensive." Um, I mean, but you know, you just want to be you. The bottom line is you want to feel inclusive, right? Right, right. right. Uh, so you know, I can't do anything about there not being any black characters in Lord of the Rings because they want to try to say that there's you know, <laughs> for whatever reason, because it's not like this is a historically you know <laughs> accurate movie or something. This is fantasy, right. so well, it's, the, it's, the, it, you know, that yeah. kind of thing. You kind of go, well, yeah. So what? You could have made a black elf or something. But I, so I, I what? Think, I think the argument there for Lord of the Rings, and this is kind of going to a whole different like realm of discussion, but um, it was actually intended as kind of an alternate um, mythology and alternate history for kind of that region, um, basically like Britain and Western Europe. Mm. And so they're thinking that you know at the in this time period. 
period, if this was like kind of an alternate mythology, this part of the world would have been all white. Um, right. And it, it's kind of the same reasoning that they'll use in uh, Warcraft, for instance. Um, there's actually an interesting example. They had like all of the, I don't know if it's like all technically or what the case was, but um, Stephen Billingsley, a friend of ours, um, talked about this at one point where um, there are no black human NPCs. Um, except they had this one NPC stuck in as a joke. There's, I think, basically like Kanye West or something like that, but like in sort of game form, so they gave him a different name and stuff like that. But the one black character was just like this off pop culture reference. Um, and it's because in Warcraft they basically say that this is a like you know Northern European sort of human race, and that's why they look all look white and blonde and that sort of stuff. Um, so fantasy, you start to get into some weird territory. kind of depends on the approach you're taking to the world. If you want it to be just a pure fantasy or if you want it to be kind of a derivative fantasy, that sort of thing. And, yeah, and, and that's, the, that's the point I make. It's, it's like, hey, uh, it, it'd be no different than, than in, in, um, in Hollywood where a character, even though he might have been white in the book, mm-hmm. a black character played him, uh, an actual black actor played that mm-hmm. character in a movie, for example. So kinda I guess like I just... Uh, kind of like the Bond debate right now. Right, yeah. right, and 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 to me, if the if the people who own the rights to Bond are open to it, then I have no argument there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It, to me, it would be like if 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 I was to say to those guys, "Hey, why don't, why isn't there a Black Bond?" Mm-hmm. Um, because I never, it, honestly, I never think about it. Because mm-hmm. yes, I know it's a British mm-hmm. story, right? right? Yeah. And Bond is Scottish specifically. But Scott, okay, I'm fair sure, enough. I'm sure in today's day and age, though, there are black Scots, you know, so. Oh, yeah. But I guess my point is hey, if they mention it and they want to do that, mm. then I'm not going to be, I'm not going to say, why does he have to be black? Yeah. Because he, he was written as this type of character. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say, man, that's great because, again, you know, even black men love to be. A uh, bond, yeah, you know. So, <laughs> really, I mean, who doesn't want to be super? Who doesn't want to be 007? Really, that's right. no different than a black man wanting to be Batman. Mm-hmm. You know, um, you know that kind of thing. It's you know we have characters that we grew up uh, that we could say that we wanted to be. But hey, would I prefer to be John Stewart, mm-hmm. Green Lantern? Sure, because man, that guy looks just like me with a goatee. Cool, <laughs> <laughs> right? Mm-hmm. So the thing is that, of, of course, I'm going to go to that because I feel drawn to that mm-hmm. because I can relate, mm-hmm. right? And that, that's the advantage to having inclusive characters in games because what what, what you do is if by putting good like characters you can look up to that you can respect um, that are good representations of just like you know people, you know, like kind of like the post racial world is when it doesn't matter, right? Indeed. And so it's just you have a good character. It's the same thing with women characters and that sort of stuff. People are like how do we like, write better women in games like make them good proactive characters that actually affect the plot you know that actually make decisions that move the plot you know so it's the same thing with any character i think where you come up with a good character um to whatever extent you can that's like you know not like stretching it just for no reason make it inclusive and that way you just have more people that have someone to relate to in your game oh indeed i mean you know laura croft is a great example of that i mean you know yeah the sex cell thing they mm-hmm. used a, as a uh, part of that plot, but overall, let's face it, that uh, she has been um, that character has been um, imitated by so many women, mm-hmm. and while the whole voluptuous sexual part is, and at least they didn't make it you know over the top. They just the, the appearance was really the only thing mm-hmm. there. Everything else was very empowering about mm-hmm. her character. Right. So hey, you know. Um, that's great, and so you know, um, uh, so you know, it's just a matter of writing in the character right. the right way. Mm-hmm. Right. And of course, that's a very sort of easy thing to say, harder thing to execute. Because even like the best intentioned people will sometimes run into issues with not portraying people the right way or making some sort of slip that you know will offend one person or the other, um, you know, whether they mean to or not. And so. But, again, if you're sort of approaching it the right way and veering away from stereotypes, um, making just good, thoughtful characters first, usually you'll avoid most of those issues, I would think. Oh, indeed. Because, again, if you're not – if you're, because to me the bottom line is if you're not committed to being stereotypical across the board, then you need to call Derek Manns up and <laughs> have him consult with you on, on, character, <laughs> on, on, on the characters uh-huh. of color in your game. Right. And that would be an easy fix. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I was going to say, that's where having more diversity in the industry helps mm-hmm. by miles. 
you know, if you don't have to call somebody to consult, if you could just look and there's four black people working, I was like, hey, is this something that you think is a problem? And you can start getting some feedback, mm-hmm. and you solve a lot of these problems. Or not even that. Maybe they're the ones that are creating the characters, so that yeah. that already cancels out the problem of questioning. You right, just right. say, "Hey, you know." And look, let's face it: we don't. <laughs> a black person shouldn't be hired just to create a black character. Mm-hmm. So, so let's <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's clear that up right yeah. now, because their talent should be able to. You know, I know plenty of talented um, black developers mm-hmm. who. I, they have created other works uh, that were not black characters. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. hey, you know. Uh, but again, that's there's nothing wrong with that as being, mm-hmm. you know, hey, this is something that we need. I mean, that would be no different than asking a woman to create a, a female character mm-hmm. that she feels like might be just that right character, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. You know, because let's face it, a guy creating a female character when there's another female artist in the a room. You know, unless he's just the better character mm. creator, right, right, right? You know, why not? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, pose that as as a possibility. And mm-hmm. then, like I said, it's not like you, you know, everything has to be in line because of that gender or, mm-hmm. or, or ethnicity. Also, having more diversity in the industry helps. Um, like not just to sort of point out when something might be problematic, but also just to notice when no one else might how homogenous your cast is, for instance. Um, I, I, I like to tell people an example. Um, I was much, much younger at the time, but I um, was volunteering to do some video editing for my church. And I was basically doing a music video, quote unquote, that was basically just a slideshow of pictures that I timed to this music they're going to be playing live. Um, and so as I was going through, without even thinking, I was picking out all these pictures of white people, white people, white people, white people. And then someone else saw it, it's like, do you want to like, you know, include some black people, some Asians, some Hispanics, anything like that? And like, it, it's like, as soon as I heard that, I was like, oh, totally, yes. And I went back and I added a whole bunch of new pictures. But it's just like one of those thoughtless things where like for some reason, and again, I was younger, I wasn't thinking about it, but you just sort of gravitate to things that you relate to. And if you're just kind of in this mode where all you're thinking about is just kind of like your own world, you're not going to necessarily be thinking about branching out into other stuff. So having someone around who can sort of say, um, hey, you have nothing but white people here, (laughs) you know, (laughs) it helps. It's a good thing to have. Oh, yeah. No, indeed. I mean, yeah, if you've got a diverse, if you have, and that's the point in my paper as well, is Mm -hmm. if you have a diverse team, um, your thought process of, um, and not necessarily just including that black person on in, in, in as a character, but just, a character and story creations period mm-hmm. um, are more more diverse and more um, and more creative when you have different people from different backgrounds on your team that's the bottom line I, I you know anyone that try to argue that mm-hmm. um, is is uh, yeah so yeah more diversity on a team will give you I think will give you result in a, in a better mm-hmm. product. And commercially, it can only help, too, because if you have more characters that people can relate to, more people are going to be interested, more people are going to buy the game. I mean, In, Indeed, and that's the, and then that's, there's your business mm-hmm. one-on-one right there, yeah. right? Yeah. You, you're covering everyone, and um, and let's face it, that you know, um, you're going to get just as many uh, consumers from... From uh, from black and Latinos than you will from from a white consumer. So mm-hmm. um, the demo has changed massively. It used to be, and this is, I think it's the industry lagging slightly behind how uh, how everybody else has changed. Is that you know it used to be uh, the all white the white boys club was mm-hmm. games it's who played them and now right. you know it's a fifty fifty club. You have just as many women and men. You know just as many as women as men playing games. You have just as many. Um, minorities as white people playing games, so now you're looking at an even playing field, and the industry just hasn't caught up with that yet. And it'll take a little time. Every you know, change always lags behind what the population thinks, and it's a big rubber band. But we need to expedite it. Mm-hmm. Oh, indeed. I mean, I, I, you know, I'd love to be uh, that person that uh, you know, Microsoft, Sony comes to and says, "Hey, you know, we want some more diverse games out there." Um, you know, hey. Support some support some minority uh, developer, you know, indie developers and companies out there, or help some get started. Mm. Is I think will be another help. You know, there, let's face it, there aren't a lot of, um, you know, uh, black owned or Latino owned uh, uh, video game developer development companies mm. out there. Sure. Um, and not everyone can get their funding and mm. and and create their games mm. in the same fashion as another business. Um, and some people may need more help than others. And, you know, um, 
you know, uh, investments and things like that in, in games will, don't always work out the same way as well. So sometimes Microsoft or Sony or 2K Games or mm-hmm. any of you guys, you may have to say, hey, um, you know, uh, indie developer, uh, you know, of minority ownership, we would like to give you, you know, said amount of money mm-hmm. to create some, some more, you know, uh, mm-hmm. to bring more diverse games to our, to our library. Sure. So I think that, that that would help immensely. Mm-hmm. And Sony's already actually been pretty good. Um, I mean, they're not the only ones who do it, but they're kind of um, considered one of the best at working with indie developers and kind of making them, um, like, not necessarily subsidiaries, but basically publishing their games and making them kind of like Sony... Um, okay. Studios in a sense, in, indeed, indeed, and I yeah, because I've I've uh, heard of a lot of those programs. Uh, whenever I come out of a GDC conference, mm-hmm. uh, they usually have something going on. So so kudos to them, you know, uh, on at, at least having that avenue, mm-hmm. uh, that that avenue for sure. Definitely. Actually, I, I want it's, inter- it's this is more of an interesting to see. Can outrage go too far? Now I don't know if y'all remember the original outrage about Resident Evil Five. Where oh, we had the trailer. The trailer, yeah. Mm-hmm. Where Indeed. it was taking place in Africa, and you had a white guy killing a lot of black people, which, personally, I didn't have an issue with because of the setting. Mm-hmm. Once again, context makes everything. And that was kind of my vote, too, or yeah. my camp. And I, I just feel like it, it kind of spiraled out of control quickly, where you're saying, hey, we need, some, we need to put in some lighter-skinned people so it's not a white guy you know, shooting just black people and not taking into account everything around it. Here's the thing. The only thing I would say that you look at when it comes to that is, are the zombies in Resident Evil 4, uh, their, their white counterparts, are the black counterparts in Resident Evil 5 more, um, have, 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 is the art related to those characters, those, those zombies, extreme? Or would you say they're normal? You know, the, you, you, when you look at that, yeah. that's when you have to say, "Hey, did you make these guys look, you know, uh, you know, darker or more sinister than the average zombie, if mm. you will?" That's where you you have to look at it. Yeah, I don't have a problem. Yeah, you're in Africa. What are you kidding me? That's mm. you know, that's <laughs> no different than saying you're in in Asia mm. and all of your zombies are going to be Asian. Yeah. Uh, so, but as long as the characters are, you know, to me, balanced in terms of art and not making, you know, um, you know, an African zombie seem more menacing than the, the white uh, zombies are the kinder, gentler zombies. Right, exactly. <laughs> that ex- that's the only point I would make about that. <laughs> and the only reason why they made a big deal about that, um, because I met the guy that wrote the first article on that mm. um, at GDC, and it wasn't that; it was the it was the lynching. They had some uh, some ropes hanging from poles right. in the trailer mm. for the American trailer, and that's what really set them off. It oh, wasn't necessarily the whole like, oh, we're killing a lot of black people. Mm-hmm. It was there was a one part in that that that, that, that trailer that that the whole lynching thing that's what got them upset. I think there's an interesting uh, point to be made there too, and this is just a general thing with uh, the outrage culture. You have someone who has like a conscientious objection to something they think might have been questionable, like the the lynching reference. Um, but then you have a whole bunch of other people who will basically see racism in this trailer and just read that as, oh, the problem is that this white guy's shooting all these black guys, and then that becomes the outrage. And then people don't really see the the real argument about the lynching reference. Right. They, they totally gloss over that and just turn into like this racist thing. Um, and then people would get defensive because it's like, well, why are you accusing us of racism? Right, and that's why I'm quick to say that I know even myself, hey, I own the game, mm-hmm. uh, and I play it, I'm fine with it. But mm-hmm. again, um, you know, I had the question, and I, and I really try not to get myself upset, but mm-hmm. hey, like I said, is it, you know, if the zombies aren't, if, if the zombies are the zombies across the board the same way, I'm fine, let's play, let's mm-hmm. have fun, you know, and so that's and, that's it. And I, I'm with you on that, because going back and playing 4, now I've played in HD, you see that the Spanish zombies are very the the look is still the same sunken eyes, mm. very grotesque, falling apart, very menacing sort of zombies mm. that you continue to see throughout five. They didn't necessarily say, okay, we're going to make them any meaner mm. just because they're necessarily darker skinned. Right, right. So yeah, and that's it. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, um, I, like I said, I mentioned uh, I give some honorable mentions mm. in my paper. Um, 
I do, I do find, I did uh, mention one questionable on my list was uh, in Gears of War mm. uh, from Jacob Taylor and uh, Augustus Coltrane. <laughs> so they had this, you know. I'm Jacob like Taylor from uh, Mass Effect, right? Exactly. Right, right. And so the reason why I mentioned J- Jacob Taylor is mm. because of the, the storyline based on Jacob Taylor. Mm. Right. Uh, would you like to comment? Since I, I don't want to sound like I'm the uh, only person that, that realizes. <laughs> I've read the storyline. I haven't played Mass Effect, so I'm not going to go into in depth. No, I'll, I'll, I'll break it down right. for you because I've played it. Um, because you would have to play, and I didn't mean to cut you off, you would have to play as a female mm-hmm. in yeah. order to see the story, mm-hmm. this part of the storyline. Well, great. okay, so I didn't play as a female, but. Um, you do hear about this in three when you talk to him in the hospital. Ah. Um, so he's not in your party anymore, but basically you catch up with him and you learn about this. Uh, basically, he falls in love with the girl, um, gets her pregnant, and basically leaves. Right. Um, and then I think what he might have said in three is that um, they were actually were planning on starting a family. I'm not sure about that. Um, but if you were only to see what happens in two... Um, and hear about what happens in two before you get that clarification in three, which might have been a reaction. Um, it's a very sort of like okay, so the one black NPC in this game <laughs> exactly. is the one that does this. Another, another one of those moments where you're like, I'm gonna give you the benefit of the doubt, but pause for a second. What are you trying to say? <laughs> right, exactly. And, yeah. and again, another game that you say, man, I enjoy playing this mm-hmm. game. It's an awesome, mm-hmm. it's an awesome storyline. It's you know, uh, but then you you know they, they that little part that's thrown in, you mm-hmm. go, oh man, come on, what was yeah. going on? And, and and it's one of those like lapses of judgment too, because Bioware, you really have to give the benefit of the doubt because they're very progressive, they're very inclusive, indeed, um, consistently winning awards, especially in the LGBT rights area. Um, right, right. And Inquisition was like lauded as this great example of inclusivity. So, um, you know, Bioware, like I'm willing to like. It's like okay, you guys, you guys messed up on this one, but <laughs> we're still cool. Right, right, right. Just, just kind of remember just that. Just remember. <laughs> exactly, and that's why I sort of gave the questionable list. Right. And the Augustus Jones, uh, the Augustus Cole, I mean uh, Coltrane. Mm. Uh, you know, I don't know. It, it, it's almost like you know, you know, when I think of that, woo, and yeah. you know, and it, it, it's like, hey, this very prominent game. Mm. You know, millions of people are going to play this. And again, it goes back to that whole thing of, is this how all black men are when mm-hmm. you're hanging out with them? They're, are they always just all about like, woo, woo. Right, exactly. <laughs> and so that's the yeah. only problem I have is not. If, if, that, if that's, that's the only thing you see. That's the right. only thing, right. And right. It's, it's not anything else. Because look, they all, all the characters are huge guys. Like they all play professional football. So mm-hmm. it's not like, you know, there's something about the character mm-hmm. that, you know, physically that I, you know, had a problem with. Mm-hmm. Again, it was just like, mm-hmm. The, the 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 personality sort of I was like I don't yeah. know you know and, who, you know, you know. And I, I didn't play much Gears of War but from what little I, what little I saw I enjoyed the character I thought he was fun uh, but it's it, it's we keep coming back to this it's that like you want to make sure you have a ton of other characters who are normal who are average who are believable and then you can have the occasional oddball be the fun character and not have every single black character you ever see in games be stereotypical see exactly because when you look at uh, Left for Dead. Yeah. Right, and you see Lewis mm-hmm. or or the coach, you go, man. It, you know, I know those two guys. Like I'm the <laughs> IT guy. I'm Lewis. Yeah. You know, nice. so yeah. that's how you. Uh, and again, Valve. You know, uh, when they create their games, they look at that and they they nail it down. And that's why, even with even with the look of Gordon Freeman, I still feel like I'm Gordon Freeman when right. I play him. Mm-hmm. And because the storyline, um, just throwing in the way. You know Alex Vance and her father, and you know the you know mixed couple, her mother being white, his father being black. You know all of that just like made me feel like that's hey, that's real world, mm-hmm. and that's just how things you know. And so uh, those kinds of things are are what make me feel good about playing a game without feeling offended again. So, I think I think Coach is such a great example because if you look at Coach and his characterization versus Coltrane and his characterization, considering they were both involved in sports. Why can't Coltrane be more reserved like coaches? Like, hey, he it's similar sports, same sort of energy, so on and so forth. So why is he out here running around, whoa, yeah, mm-hmm. like he's still, you know, strapped in helmet and playing, mm-hmm. you know, out there playing what what was it, murder ball and, and uh, gears right, of war? Right. <laughs> just it's it's all just uh I can't get upset about it. I'm no, no, no. <laughs> I mean it, it, it again again, that's why I put him on the questionable list because it didn't upset me, it just sort of said to me, Wow, really, you know, mm-hmm. this mm-hmm. this thing so eh, you yeah. know. 
Um, it's not good, not bad. Not, kinda, right. It's yeah. just sort of one of the things where I'm like, all right, it's mm-hmm. teetering, but you know, um, but it's all right. I'm fine. You know, mm-hmm. it, it wasn't something extreme like the other examples. Sure, so. sure. Yeah, it's not somebody you know. It's not somebody to pick up a pitchfork over, but it still it still hurts a little bit, you know, to see that and be like, guys, we got it's it's 2015. We got to do better. <laughs> we just we got to do better, man. Mm-hmm. No, indeed, indeed, indeed. So, kind of to I guess sort of bring us near the end. I'm just kind of curious about like, um, and I, I know Carson, you've mentioned this before at one point um, out of you know the podcast. Um, what it's like to be a black gamer in kind of the gamer community. Do you guys want to comment on that at all? Um, you know, do you think there are any problems? Do you think it's you know getting better, getting worse? I can say it's weird. It's, it's weird. better. It's better now mm-hmm. as games have gotten more inclusive. When you're a kid, and every you know, I'm out here playing Kingdom Hearts, and all my friends are just playing Madden and NBA, in NCAA and NBA, NBA. It's like, hey, where do I fit? Mm. Uh, you get teased. Everybody knows like that whole. Nerds versus jock things. Mm-hmm. As much as we like to say that's not how it is, sometimes it's how it is, and it can be rough at first. Uh, now, for me, it was a little bit different because I also was a jock. I played football, so after a while, you know, when you're throwing around, you know, 450 pounds of a squat, it's like, hey, come mess with me, you're gonna get punched out. You <laughs> kind of, and I'm not a violent person, but <laughs> it kind of sort of builds a little bit of respect for more people who live you alone. But I can say, being a black nerd isn't the easiest thing in the world. Mm-hmm. It's just not. Uh, there's a lot of people that will push back against you. There's a lot of a lack of acceptance in the community. It can get tough. Yeah, no, I, you know, I'm, I'm a little older, so I can say that um, I definitely, uh, you know, can recall times when uh, relatives and friends looked at me weird because, you know, I wanted, um, I wanted to watch the fantasy cartoon versus, you know, you know, uh, your regular cartoons mm-hmm. or what have you, or, you know. Um, I wanted to buy this particular video game mm-hmm. versus the typical video game, right? So, and, and the same thing now. I mean, you know, yes, um, you know, the average black man's home is probably going to have Madden in it <laughs> versus you coming to my home and it's it's Call of Duty, it's Diablo, it's StarCraft, it's, mm-hmm. you know, uh, uh, I, I play everything that I think is awesome. Yeah. Including Madden, right? Right. But I won't play Madden as much mm-hmm. because I I did Call of Duty and Half Life Two mm-hmm. uh more. Right. right? right. So um, you know, and it's a good thing my wife uh, digs uh, uh you know, um my nerdiness because, you know, I can be myself with that and you know mm-hmm. uh um and, and, and feel comfortable. And again, you know, when you are, and of course, just using school as an example, when he being in arts and technology, um, in this, in this, you know, in this major, um, you can be in a class and, and, and uh, talk about those things mm. and everyone's like, yeah, you know, right, right, there, right, right there with you. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, hey, they it's, took a step farther than you did. <laughs> you know, you ended up down a, a rabbit hole. So. Mm. You know, yeah. And, it, you know, uh, so, you know, you find your niche and, you know, and I've even taught those same black students who were on on what we call the nerdier side, mm-hmm. you know, loved the, you know, World of Warcrafts and loved to play League of Legends and that kind of thing, right? Versus I go home and play Madden or what have you. Um, and the same thing would be reflective in when I, we would have a game day, mm-hmm. and even at the Rye University, you know, uh, you know, that business major mm-hmm. The black guy who was a business major would be playing Madden, mm. while the the game and simulation programmer black guy mm. would be like, "I'm playing Call of Duty." Yeah. You know, <laughs> nice. so you know, you there's that that same mm. um, differences in style and 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 taste go across all cultures. Sure, I mean, sure. so Definitely. you know, uh, yeah. and, and it's you know, it, it, as you get older, it's sort of, those walls sort of break down, and mm. you see people. I think we're entering a golden generation where everybody is kind of cool with liking what they like yeah you're allowed to be yourself more and more these days uh the whole you know the whole putting away not to say putting away childish things but putting away what people used to consider kids toys Mm -hmm. is kind of going away you know if you grew up liking video games you still like video games then you like video games Mm -hmm. if you like gaming is becoming legitimate now well and just nerd culture in general (laughs) uh comics Mm -hmm. it used to be a massive detriment if you were still in the comics when you were 
<laughs> the well, well, people don't realize is that the business world realized that there are billions of dollars involved in that, and that's why they're accepting mm. yeah. our nerdiness now <laughs> versus 10, 15, 20 years ago where mm. they were like, you're just a kid playing kids' games. And then they realized, holy smokes. The, the nerdy kids grew up and have money now. <laughs> well, yeah. you know, and you know who set that precedence was like your id software guys, uh-huh. for yeah. example. You know, those guys were making tons of money and everyone was like, who and all of a sudden it was like, holy smokes, these guys are super rich now. Mm-hmm. And it was like, oh, we want we want in on that. And it was like, oh, you don't even play games. Why do you want in on this now? Yeah. You know, right. so, uh, so yeah, that's where it has, it has come now. Mm-hmm. So that's why you will now meet more business people who are non-developers at a GDC or mm-hmm. at an E3 or what have you, or at PAX or what have you, mm-hmm. than you would a developer. Mm-hmm. You know, so you, you touched on an interesting little thing there for a second too. Um, the you know you guys aren't even gamers. What are you doing here now? Um, I think now we're also in a bit of a phase where we've kind of established that we're cool with our own culture, and like you know, screw you guys if you don't like it. But now that we have more new people coming into the culture, now we're getting kind of defensive and being like, oh no, you can't have what's ours. You know, and I think <laughs> like, I think this is a phase. I think it will go away pretty soon. Hopefully sooner than later because it's really obnoxious. Um, but like I don't think there's such thing as the gamer anymore there's no such thing as the gamer culture anymore i think that we're now having you know gaming being a more general media form you know just like movies just like books just like anything else um and you're going to start to have more and more gaming subcultures you're going to have people who are into more story driven games you're going to have people who are into shooters into strategy games i mean you already kind of have it within the gaming community they just don't realize that they are kind of um you know broken up into subgenres yeah. no sub subcategories i should say indeed yeah. indeed and uh so if i can just um if I can just uh, become the Tyler Perry of, of game development, that'd be <laughs> awesome, you know, um, and uh, and make those games that um, are missing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's what I want to do. That's that's what I aspire to do. Uh, on top of my teaching and mm-hmm. and, uh, and everything else, is I, I want to be that person that they, that says, oh. Um, Hey, I really don't mind that I've just released my my next game that is uh, you know that everyone sort of expects. Mm-hmm. I mean, it'd be no different than Call of Duty. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. everyone is expecting that Call of Duty to come out. I want them. I would love for people to say, "What's what's next, Derek? Yeah. What's next?" You know. Uh, so cool, cool. Uh, based on my style. So just don't make Alex Cross because that was terrible. <laughs> <laughs> cool. So any uh, closing comments before we wrap up here today? Um, I think we we had a good conversation. I think we really got to the bottom of these issues. Yeah. Um, as you said, there's a lot of good out there. There's a lot of bad. There's a lot more good now than there was, say, 10, 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And that's it's always good to see progress. Um, we still got a long way to go. And we'll always have a long way to go. Nothing will ever be perfect. There will always, always be other steps we could take. But uh, the fact that we're now open to sit around a table and talk about these yeah. issues means so much more than just hey we'll shove it in the back and we'll deal with it later mm-hmm. oh indeed indeed and uh Microsoft Sony give me a call <laughs> throw me some money I, I am for hire <laughs> <laughs> well not just that I, I, I would really love to just get my company off the ground and, and, and be that be that company that can and can make those games that are missing so awesome that's what I'd like to conclude on is hey um you know, you know, give give me a chance to make some great stuff. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, I think that'll about wrap it up for episode number twenty two of the backwardcompatible dot com podcast. Um, Derek Karsten, thank you for joining us and for talking about what could be a touchy subject. I think it uh, I think it went pretty well, and we had a we had a good chat. Um, so this is Chris, and for Derek and Karsten, we'll see you guys next time. We want you to join the discussion on our website, backward compatible dot com. You bring a unique perspective, and dialogue makes everyone better. Leave a comment in our podcast section. If it's good, one of the crew members will respond to it. This time, tell us about your favorite inclusive games, and where you think games can continue to improve. Thanks for listening. Until next time, stay compatible.